Welcome to Robot House. It's uh, your one-stop podcast for pop culture and, well, I guess just pop culture. We'll, and we'll, we'll find a tagline eventually, everyone. <laughs> Once you pop, the fun don't stop. Yes. Oh, wait. Pringles, damn it. All right, hang on. I got some spare change. <laughs> no, but uh, today, uh, well, we just got some news a couple days ago. Uh, the regular show is ending. On its uh, seventh season, I would say. I think it's eighth or seventh. Eighth, yeah. The one where they just finished. Yeah. And uh, this final season is apparently a bunch of parks from all over the world being launched into space. So, obviously, all the important character arcs are going to get wrapped up <laughs> in space. Uh, but that got me thinking about uh, shows that ended well. And I, I have no doubt that regular shows can have a satisfying ending. They clearly, hmm? they all get arrested for not following the Good Samaritan Act. <laughs> Obviously, Muscle Man in particular. Dude, I had a camera. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we will not be talking about Seinfeld in this episode, but I figured, yeah, we could talk about um, two or three shows that um, we think ended fairly well. In one case, ending uh, three separate times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe we'll do a recap of the final season once it's all said and done. But it's Cartoon Network, so that final season could last until next year sometime. <laughs> yeah. Got got to put something in between all those Teen Titan Go episodes. Yes. Besides my laughter, I'll stay on my Teen Titan Go's final episode when it comes out. <laughs> They faked us out that that show was ending like three times. I know. They love trolling you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, so I just mean Mark today, uh, which is probably a good thing because if it was just the whole cast, I think we'd be here for two hours. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's start off uh, with a cartoon. Uh, my first pick is Futurama. Which, uh, as I mentioned, it technically ended three times. The first, uh, before we get into that, though, let's uh, do a little summary. Uh, Fry is a delivery boy in uh, 1999. And uh, he gets a prank order, or so it seems, to a cryogenics lab on New Year's Eve. Fed up with his life and the fact that he's falling for a stupid prank... And pretty much having one of the worst days ever before that. His girlfriend leaves him. He uh, gets called a loser by a ten-year-old, and it's not far off. Lose Donkey Kong. I, I mean Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he uh, he takes a beer, and he decides to eat the pizza at this empty lab. He leans back on his chair, and he falls into a cryotube. And is frozen for 1,000 years. He wakes up in the future, and um, and to his credit, he uh, he takes the most optimistic outlook possible. He's not always super cheerful about where he is in life, but uh, he uh, he's definitely one of the more uh, endearing characters in fiction, I think. Uh, basically, he never gives up, and he just... He loves his new life in the future, even though he ends up as a delivery boy again. <laughs> um, I don't want to go into too much detail. I mean, he meets Leela, who ends up becoming his love interest. Uh, he meets Bender, who ends up becoming his uh, his best friend. Bender, by the way, is a uh, alcoholic robot that likes to smoke cigars. Oh, oh yes, Bender. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he meets his uh, great great. So I think it's like 12 greats nephew, uh, Hubert Farnsworth, who is a 160-year-old man, <laughs> uh, and insane mad scientist. Uh, he meets Dr. Zoidberg, the alien doctor, who doesn't know human anatomy with Jack. And uh, I mean, that, that's the core cast. I, th- I think you could argue Hermes and Amy aren't really main characters. The, they uh, they get their own spotlight episodes too, but uh, the core arc of the show is Fry and Leela, and their 
sort of Ted and Dianis, Dianish relationship. It never gets quite as abusive <laughs> as Ted and Diane. Or younger or viewers. Sam and Diane. I'm sorry. I, I keep, I mixed up the act. Ted yeah, Ted Danson and Jelly Long. Um, for, for you young years out, youngins out there, we're talking about Cheers. For a more, uh, current reference, I guess I could say, uh, Katniss and that boring guy who hit on a rock for the whole book. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, finally, Liz's relationship is the core dynamic of the show. It's a, definitely a will they, won't they? But, uh, thankfully, they sort of give that up in the last season. But I will get to that. Which last season? <laughs> the last, last season. <laughs> I'm sure they'll come back, though. Um, so, the first, uh, season, the first set of episodes, uh, has four seasons, and it ends with an episode called The Devil's Hands is Our Idle Playthings. And basically, Fry switches, uh, hands with a character called the Robot Devil. There's a Robot Devil in the future. And, uh, he becomes a, uh, brilliant classical musician, because the only thing holding him back was the fact that his hand-eye coordination is actually kind of crappy. Um, he manages to uh, turn his success into a chance to write an opera, and he decides to write one about Leela. Uh, the robot devil, however, wants his hands back, and goes through a very convoluted series of plots uh, to deafen Leela <laughs> and trick her into uh, getting engaged to him. It works. Uh, he gets his uh, hands back because Fry can't let Leela marry him. And uh, the series ends on a little a sweet moment because she doesn't care that he's not a good musician anymore. Uh, she just cares that he loved her enough to write an opera. And uh, I don't know. I think this is a satisfying conclusion. But, no, like I said, I think this is a satisfying conclusion. Um... And to, for the first four uh, seasons, it's a nice wrap-up of the arc. But what happens next is, uh, due to uh, Adult Swim reruns, Cartoon, or not Cartoon Network, uh, Comedy Central orders uh, a new season of 12 episodes, but they decide to turn into four movies. By the way, these four movies are probably the worst Futurama has to offer. And it's not their fault, it's just the way they have to write them. So they're cut into four. They're, yeah, I hear uh, Bender's Game was probably the best of them all. Yeah, because I think at that point they managed to get the format right. Um, let's, let's see. Uh, Bender's Big Score in... Not Bender's Game. Beast with a Billion Backs. Yeah, Beast with a Billion Backs. Uh, Bender's Game and then Into the Wild Green Yonder. Uh, oh, I, I meant Bender's Big Score as the best one, I think. I didn't mean uh, the Dungeon uh, Dragon one. <laughs> I actually don't mind that one as much because it's basically just a silly what if and you don't actually have to watch it. <laughs> now, there's some odd choices in that one. Um, Bender's Big Score is more about how Fry is just a really lonely guy at the end of the day. And, uh, they kind of reset the relationship, which I don't like. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Beast. <laughs> or, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I got this mixed up. Bender's Big Score is about uh, email That's scanning, the... and it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Beast with a Billion Backs is about Lonely Fry. Uh, um, they've uh, reset, because of events in Bender's Big Score, they reset the Fry and Lila relationship a bit. Which, um, it would take for, far too long to explain. So, they're all on Netflix if you want to watch these. Uh, and then, um,. <sighs> Like we yeah. said, Bender's Game is uh, basically a D&D parody. It ha if you care about the future on the universe, some important stuff happens, but nothing big. It's more about Professor Farnsworth. And, yeah, well, well, sort of more about Professor Farnsworth. It's really a weird episode, and I don't know exactly what they were going for. <laughs> uh, and then Into the Wild Green Yonder is basically all about Fry and how he just, for some reason... <laughs> Is so important to saving the universe. He's so dumb. <laughs> He's immune to so many weird mind tricks that all the bad guys in the future use. 
<laughs> He's immune for no reason. <laughs> yes. Uh, he gets psychic powers, and uh, it's just it's hilarious. Uh, again, uh, the format kind of hurts it, but it's um, basically it's Fry acting like an idiot trying to find this evil slug thing, and Leela acting like an idiot because uh, her whole thing is she finds the cause and goes way too overboard into it to overcompensate for uh, what she feels are personal flaws. And at the end, uh, they kind of realize, again, that they, they, they care about each other. And uh, they jump into a wormhole. And that is how the series ends the second time. Not They have no idea where they'll end up. We're back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you don't know what's going to happen, except that uh, long before this episode came out, I'm calling them episodes, but they're like... Uh, they're hour and a half movies. Uh, they're two oh. hours, right? No, no, they're hour. Hour half, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but our, our Comedy Central announced the full regular season long before Wild Green Yonder came out. Uh, so uh, it starts off with the wormhole dropping them off on Earth. We're back, baby. Yes. And then uh, the next two seasons are basically. Normal Futurama seasons. I think they're fairly good. Uh, the only thing that people didn't like about Seven, Season Seven, is that uh, Matt Groening was really trying to reset the Fry and Leela relationship again, and no one wanted that. And I think in response to that, when the show actually does end uh, with its final episode, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Let's see. And this time, I mean it. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, literally, okay, I knew it was Meanwhile something. The episode is called Meanwhile. Uh, and basically, the professor invents a machine that can rewind time 30 seconds. Uh, if you're caught, uh, if you do that, though, and you don't go to the time shelter, uh, They'll be ripped apart and sent to a parallel universe. Uh, it, it's a little, uh, it, it's complicated. All their time travel stuff is super complicated because they don't think uh, time travel should be easy to use. But uh, anyway, anyway, Fry ends up uh, inviting Leela to the top of the Empire State Building for a romantic dinner where he intends to uh, propose to her. Uh, she's a little bit late, and Fry decides to kill himself. <laughs> Uh, he jumps off the building, but he has the device. Uh, or eventually Leela gets the device. Uh, anyway, for a bulk of the episode, he is constantly uh, being killed, and time is rewinding. So <laughs> he uh, he's brought back to life, but he's still in midair, uh, somewhere uh, like a, somewhere like a hundred hundreds of feet above the ground. Every time they rewind time, and they have no idea how to save him. Uh, eventually, uh, Layla figures it out, and, uh, uh, sorry, and they break the device, and her and Fry are stuck outside of time. Basically, time freezes for everybody but them. And, uh, then the show just shows them living their life. They, they get married, uh, on their own terms, basically. They, they cut to each other. And, uh, they just explore the frozen planet. It's actually really sweet. And then the professor comes out. The professor was ripped out of time, too. And, uh, it took him a long time to get out. Uh, and then he fixes the machine. And the implication is that, uh, he'll rewind time to before all this stuff happened. And, uh, he might be the only one that remembers what happened. Uh, some people see it a different way. Uh, some people think that he resets the entire series, and you can watch it all as a loop. Uh, I don't agree with that, but either way, I think this is a satisfying ending because uh, Fry and Leela are still together. Uh, the impl- there's a hint because they're they're with the time machine that they'll remember what happened, and they won't break up this time. 
Uh, it's a sweet episode. I, I don't know. I uh, I, I like Futurama's ending. Endings. <laughs> Wild Green Yonder is probably the weakest, but uh, Devil's Hands are, I think, some of the best episodes in the series. So, yeah, I, I like the opera stuff. Yeah, they do a few musicals in Futurama. I can't believe that everyone's a living. <laughs> They just like to let their voice actors sing, except John DiMaggio, who cannot <laughs> sing as Bender. Or <laughs> oh, So, what do you think about Futurama, Mark? Oh, I was a, I was a pretty big fan of it. I kind of well, washed in and washed out with interest, thanks to all the canceling, coming back, canceling. Back. Um, I never even watched Bender's game, but I did watch the other three movies. Yeah. I did watch when they came back, I think, like, the first few episodes they came back to uh, Comedy Central, but yeah. um, <laughs> to be honest, I've seen clips of the final episode and haven't watched it all the way through. <laughs> you should. It's really good. Um, you don't really... There's a few episodes of the final seasons uh, that are, like, super top-notch and um, are worth watching. There's a, a couple that I honestly can never see again. They basically knew they had two seasons, and they tried to wrap up all the plot points. Mm-hmm. They do things like there's sewer mutants. Uh, uh, they let them come live on the surface. Like, I have all the seasons before they uh, before the movies on DVD. I just yeah. didn't. Get yeah, they're all on Netflix now. I, I kind of regret. I had the last season on uh, Make a Play for some reason. I think I probably snatched up the last couple for like maybe eight bucks on like Zon or something. They they had to have reprinted to make them cheap as dirt now. Because they're not on like Comedy Central anywhere, right? Um, no, they really aren't. They didn't even exile them to like 4.30 a.m. or anything. No, I don't know why. Maybe they didn't have the rights that long. Hmm. But, I mean, I like the show... I like the show well enough. Um, yeah. Some really great ones, like uh, the professor going off to the near-death star. Yeah. I actually just watched that today. <laughs> yeah. Him driving was just precious. <laughs> Azuzu! <laughs> um, the the one where they found Alcazar and they did the Mary with Children references. Yeah. That was brilliant. Um, yeah, it's a good show, and I mean... It rarely betrays its characters. There are people who think sometimes Fry gets too dumb or Layla acts too much like a jerk to him. I, I don't know. I, I'm willing to... Because at the end of the day, it's a comedy first. Right. And Zap Brannigan is one of the best characters ever. Oh, yes. In fact, he will make America Brannigan. Yes. Yes, he <laughs> will. <laughs> um, so yeah. how much his quotes work. <laughs> So well. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember a point where, you know, I would actually watch, like, rewatch the seasons like I would, like, a, with Archer now. Yeah. But I have, I'm actually looking at the DVD volumes over on my little display area. They're like, huh, I haven't watched these in a long time. It's nice, yeah, it's nice to go back and watch them every so often. Like, yeah. It yeah. still holds up. Yeah, it's been like what three, four years. So yeah, they they ended in twenty thirteen, right? Yeah, I believe so. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the movies though, I don't think I'll watch. Like, uh, I rarely have ever rewatched the movies because, like, like I said, only three of them are really worth watching. Yeah, if you like the characters, Beast of the Billion Backs has so many problems. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just when they said David Cross was going to be the monster, I thought, oh, this is going to be hilarious. But he doesn't really act like David Cross. No. I'm like, well, what? Just, why do you waste time with that? Yeah, it's like David Cross is just reading from a script. Yeah. It's like the album and the Chipmunks performances. Yeah, he clearly didn't care. It was such a waste of. But yeah, I like the show. I'm also in that camp where it's a shame Futurama is the show that had to go and they're still around. Well, Simpsons will probably be ending soon, but I think we're far from ever getting a satisfying conclusion to that. Yeah, I'm glad that Futurama's 
lived again, as it were, through these, some of these crossovers, though. Yeah. Like, the Simpsons one was, was pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, literally a uh, comic, though. Like, yeah. They adapted a, a Bongo comic that had the same exact plot. Um, we'd probably have to eventually go through a top ten or something episode thing for Futurama. I think we will. I don't know how we're going to narrow it down, but we'll figure something out. Yeah, but the show's great. I mean, I've got no real complaints to it. I've, I've watched, like I said, I watch, used to watch it pretty regularly, and then the you know, whole we'll, we're gone, we're back, we're gone stuff, and it's just like, ah, yeah. why did I catch it? And plus, yeah, it's kind of like how this was with me, too, where it just seemed like I kept working during when it was on. Yeah. That, so, and they kept messing around with the time zones and stuff. It, yeah, yeah, it's like, now it's on at 7, now it's on at 7.30. And then, and then like 10, 10.30, it's just, ugh. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's worth checking out if you um, if you have a couple of days to just devote to a show. I think FX should get the series and marathon it, too. Mm. I'm sure they will at some point. It yeah, would get for them. The problem with marathoning is the movies. And there's two different, it, it, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why uh, they haven't seen it in syndication. It has enough episodes for it. Hey, they, they could probably get away with not showing the movies. It would well, if they do that, they lose... Uh, well, if they're four episodes, yeah, they, yeah, they, they lose uh, 16 episodes. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Ah, oh, well. Don't have sex with the robots. Yes. Unless they're Lucy Liu. <laughs> So let's move on. Uh, our next show is Frasier, of course. And Fra- I should know because I am Frasier. No, no, no it's, uh, it's Frasier. And, uh, this is Mark's, tri- Mark's pick. So, uh, I'll let him go. Yep. So everybody, all you youngsters out there, you know Cheers, right? Of course you do. <laughs> Actually, let's have a bit of a resurgence slightly. So yeah, they might. Yeah. Cheers is on, uh, yeah, Hallmark Channel at like 3 a.m. and a couple that times. An I- odd choice for Hallmark Channel. I know, right? But, um, you know, Sam, as opposed to, what'd you keep calling him I before? I calling him Ted. Ted. <laughs> can't help it. I remember more from uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm now. Uh, but anyway, they're in the bar in Boston, you know, the Cheers bar would get all its regulars. You know, you got Cliff the Mailman and, you know, or the alcohol. Nor, yeah. And one of them was then Kelsey Grammer, who played the character Dr. Fraser Crane, a psychiatrist. And, you know, he was your, basically your stuffed shirt at the time. He would, like, he would let his, I don't know, I wouldn't say guard down, but I guess he'd, he'd untuck, as it were. Join on, join in on some of the stuff going on. I mean, he liked, uh, he liked Diane. Like there was actually a uh, competition for uh, Sam for his first uh, season. Yeah. Where, uh, Diane completely ruined him as a human being. Yep, she left him at the altar. <laughs> so anyway, as uh, when when Cheers ended, uh, about uh, maybe ten or so years later. Eleven, actually. Eleven. Mm-hmm. Went just as long as Frazier did. Ah. Well, eleven years then later, uh, they then they. Decided to do a spin-off, as it were. They had I mean, two choices, I, I think. Like, oh, oh, what's that? They had two choices. They were either going to do Cliff, moving to Florida, or uh, Frasier. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing they went with Frasier. Yes. Have the Cliff show would be so short. Yeah, I can't imagine that lasting very long. So, instead of Boston, you know, Frasier moves to Seattle. That's where he's from. Where his, you know, that's where he grew up. Um, he gets a radio show there. And he moves into a pretty luxurious uh, penthouse apartment. There are people who still try to do the math on that to figure out how he afforded it. Yeah. So he does a radio show for like about four hours every day. And he's living like this really comfy life at the beginning, but then he gets a call from his brother, who he had a brother, folks. No, he was never referenced, I think, at all in Cheers. No, uh, he says Martin is, he says his father is dead in Cheers. 
Uh, yes. The only family member you ever meet is his mother. Hmm. Well, apparently his brother, Niles, calls and says, you know, that their father had an accident in his, uh, I think he's living in like a little condo or something, or a little apartment himself. I don't yeah. think it's a home then. But yeah, he, um, yeah, they show it later in the series. He's basically living in a, like a, a one bedroom apartment. Oh, yes. Series, yeah. yes. And I remember it's the little flashback episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, he, he falls and, you know, their father was, is a retired police officer who mm. uh, had to be retired due to he got shot in the hip yeah. during a robbery. So he has issues with his hip and so mobility. And they believe it's just, you know, he shouldn't be living on his own anymore. Yeah. It's actually one of the more organic excuses to get a parent living with a child. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Fraser goes from being a solo to now uh, Martin moved in, as well as Eddie, the dog. <laughs> so now you've got your little dog shenanigan going on, too. Yes. So in case the, the show's humor ain't pulling it, he can always just go to the interactions with Eddie and Eddie. Eddie was a ham at the beginning of the show. Uh, Kelsey Grammer would be mad at you. Eddie is not an actor. He's a <laughs> trained animal. <laughs> so now it's Fraser, Martin, and Eddie are all under one roof. And of course there's going to be... It only it only takes like a, a episode... or Yeah, it only takes like a little bit for Fraser to realize, you know, this is just too much. Like, I'm here at work and who knows what... Yeah, what uh, Daphne... She's she's from England. She's just here in the states. She gets a, a, a wacky type. She's eccentric, yes. She claims I'm a psychic. <laughs> first time Fraser even sees it, she's adjusting her bra. Yeah. So she, catching her hand in the cooking tin. <laughs> um. So Martin likes her, mm -hmm. and Fraser kind of doesn't. But then again, like she's only going to be there when Fraser's not around there. So he thinks. Yeah. So what's the problem? There is no problem. And then Daphne says, that, oh, great, because she gets the job, that, hey, I'll move my stuff in right away. But the understanding was that it wasn't a living decision. Yeah. But then, you know, they have to make compromise. And then it's like, it's kind of Fraser abuses the situation to make her basically an indentured servant. <laughs> Pretty much. So now you've got Fraser, Martin. Eddie and Daphne all under one roof now. And it's just, you know, these, this quick transition now of like, oh, I just moved from Boston. I'm not even near my family anymore, though, to be fair, he's away from Lilith, so. <laughs> yeah, I think the first season, it's worth noting, he has a son with Lilith, his, his ex-wife. Yeah. And um, the show does make a point to mention that he hates being away from his son. But right. That he's willing to try to find a life for himself. Right. Because he'd be no good to his son miserable. Right. And now he's now he's gone from that big change to now he has to share his apartment with everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair, fair, it's a huge apartment. <laughs> and <laughs> Daphne's closet was like a hat museum for a while. Yeah. That's why they couldn't have a freaking washer dryer for like ten, nine seasons. <laughs> um, so of course you get your episodes where you know, the dad's quirks, Daphne's quirks, and the, well, how things Fraser likes. They just, you know, they're all clashing and stuff. And yeah. Even there's a point where Fraser thinks it ain't going to work, and he kind of wants Martin to leave. But Martin's Hopefully like a couple times in the first season. Martin's like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> he, he wants to form like a, a bond because, you know, they just, they, there was a big falling out, especially after their mother died. Yeah. So it's like Fraser wants to be the good son, and Martin's like, "You think you think we can just forge a relationship over like days? No, that takes years." Yeah. So and then it turns into the core arc of the series, basically, is Fraser and Martin and Niles, uh, Niles, who becomes basically the second protagonist. I would argue. Yeah, um, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's basically them getting to know their father and realizing that. They're not that different at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, they're more cultured. Martin's more a down-to-earth guy, but, you know, they all had that one bonding point, and that was their mom. Mm -hmm. And they make sacrifices for him, he makes sacrifices for them. Yeah. 
and I mean, just I, I like that they show Martin. Most shows won't do this, but they show that uh, Esther, their, his wife and their mother, was not that great of a person over the course of the show, and that. Oh yeah, especially when they find the journal. Yeah, and that actually happens really early. I, I thought it was like season two or three, but it's season one when they find out she cheated on Martin. Yeah, and uh, that's a recurring plot point that happens again and again throughout the show. And I just like that most shows would make it, they would just make it Martin and, oh, that was a mistake and he's better, but it's something that really affected him and he still genuinely cares for this woman who hurt him. And I think that's a bonding point for him and Frasier especially. Yeah. Um, Lilith cheated on him, right? She did? It's weird. Okay, so in Cheers... She leaves him because she wants to, uh, like, go to this biodome project. And she leaves him for this lunatic doctor who, uh, like, tries to cut off all contact with him and with her and, uh, her son and Frasier. And, uh, she eventually decides to go back to, uh, Frasier. But, uh, then Cheers ends about two years later. And the implication is that they just couldn't make it work, and they got a, a mutual divorce. And Lil gets to pay. Well, it's shared custody, I think, but because he moves to Seattle, uh, she has primary custody. But again, they never go into detail about it. Uh, I mean, logically, I've always worked it out that Lilith pays him alimony, mm. because she cheated on him. And, uh... I think... I think they said in one of the episodes that actually he pays her. See, I don't know. That doesn't seem right to me, because... I forget which one that was. But I'm... Who's it like a tenured professor or some nonsense? She doesn't need the extra income. Right. I, again, they might not even have alimony. Um, she gets married like three or four times anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so during this series, too, you get this... You get... You get Fraser's work life that gets introduced into it too. Like at the radio station, he gives producer Roz, and she becomes good friends with the yeah. family. Roz becomes almost the secondary uh, protagonist herself. Yeah, like, especially after um, after she has her child. Yeah, she's definitely like Fraser's best friend. Yeah, if it weren't for the fact that they slept with each other, I'd say they almost treat and act like brother and sister. Well, no, they still do. I think he handles it. I love that episode, actually, because can you tell we really like Frasier, everyone? Uh, because he handles it, like, really maturely. He's like, I figured this might happen at some point. I mean, we're really close friends, and sometimes I can be misconstrued as uh, romance. And yeah. they talk about it, and they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I think season 10, they do this weird semi-romance thing. And I, I don't think worked. And they completely ignore it in the final season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, for most of it, yeah, they definitely have a brother-sister relationship. She gets along really well with Martin. She she lets Niles have it, because originally like, he pokes fun at her because she likes to sleep around. And yeah, stuff. like the first two seasons, you didn't remember ever meeting her. Yeah. And then uh, I think they never show an episode where they sort of like click. But at some point, I guess they decided they actually have a lot in common and they just rag on each other. I think the one where they kind of click is um, uh, when Daphne gets engaged to Donnie and he's at the cafe and she's at the cafe too. So I kind of think that's where they maybe got a better understanding of each other. Yeah, but I mean, they sort of drop the oh, I don't remember who you are thing pretty early and then he just starts uh, banging on her for <laughs> being uh Trollop. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that's fair. I think she's yeah. actually, if she was a male character, she'd be Sam alone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what was fun when you had Sam actually being in an episode. <laughs> yeah. They really didn't do anything with him and Ross. That was a little disappointing. Well, they flirted a bit, but I think uh, I think people expected them to sleep together, but they're too light. Yeah. She doesn't want a guy like uh, Sam. <laughs> and that was one of the great things about the show, too, was that they splashed in a lot of the Cheers characters, of course. Mm. One every season, at least. And one episode where they just 
brought out everybody at the reunion. Well, not everybody, unfortunately, but most of them. Yeah. Most of the people you remember pretty well. Yeah. Like, that one guy, that, that one random guy, was like, that guy died years ago, you dumb bastard. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you got you got Roz, you got some of Fraser's other work people, you know, like uh, Bulldog. Yeah. And, Bulldog is probably one of the best, like, recurring characters. You can't, you can't really say he's part of the main cast, but... I think he wanted to be, but the fact that he just disappeared... After, well, he, after Kenny comes in and fires him, he does disappear for like two seasons, and then he comes back, and he's not on the radio anymore. Right. And they got, that's kind of an arc they never resolved, but... Yeah, like him and Rawls were close to actually being something, but then, you know, she just let him down, and, yeah. and all that. I mean, you got all the other radio personalities, too, Gil, and... Yeah. Gil's really the only one that comes to any consistency. Like, they make jokes about Chopper Dave and uh, Father Mike, but they kind of disappear. And then, you know, we're, we're going to jump ahead a lot with this guy, but Kirby, too. But Yeah. Kirby isn't in that many episodes, actually. Yeah. So I'll go rewatching. I'm like, huh. Um, they don't really... They, they delve enough into Martin's like past with other characters, like, like his cop buddies and stuff. Yeah. His I'm constant, not... like... He has, like, seven partners he doesn't talk to anymore. Yeah. Um, Niles didn't have many old friends that were, but the constant reference we get all the time is Maris's wife. Yeah. I think that's one of the strongest arcs in the series, too, is the fact that he really is in deep denial about why he married Maris. Yeah. Because he feels like he's too principled of a person to do that. Like, and even Martin po points it out at the beginning, where it's like, he married for money. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just to impress his bar buddies. <laughs> And it's just, yeah, he just won't acknowledge that his marriage with Maris just doesn't work. Yeah. And it's a struggle because, obviously, like, him and he's attracted to death. Yeah. And he's trying to, like, impress her, and, like, he's just trying to, he's trying to get with her, and yet he's still trying to remain faithful to Maris. Yeah. And eventually, Fraser's like, what, you want to have an affair or something? And there are a few times during the series where it almost could have swung that way. Yeah, and ultimately he does the right thing. Though, as you learn more about Maris, you realize that the right thing for him would have been to be divorced immediately. Oh, yeah. And you never see Maris, ladies and gentlemen. You never the do. The way she's described, there's no way they could cast anyone. No, she'd look like Cruella de Vil at best. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh my god. No human could be Maris's proportions. No way that much and live. <laughs> um, so you got the whole Niles trying to get with Daphne thing that happened, and that happens, I want to say, what, around season nine? Season eight or nine? No, no, uh, seven, actually, is when they get together. Uh, and that was, their relationship was one of the things that I liked watching, like, uh, Moon Dance is one of my favorite mm -hmm. episodes. The only episode, the only bad thing about them getting together is that her friggin' mother is introduced in the show. Yes, yes, I was about to bring her Gertrude is one of the characters in the show. The Moon family is best in small doses, and the fact that she ends up being part of the main cast Yes, that's is, oh. like, her one brother was Doctor Who. Huh. Yes, I, def I forget which one it is, but yes. And, um, I'm just gonna look up her last name and find out later. <laughs> um, uh, what's the, what's the drunk brother? Wait, Daphne's brother or Daphne's brother? Hmm. One of Daphne's brothers is Doctor Who. One of them. Which one of the doctors? That's probably David Tennant. Then. Okay. Um, but moving but, on. <laughs> yeah, I mean Daphne's mom just seemed like oh god. Like, small doses, as you said, and then... Oh, Simon. Simon's the one that's uh, insufferable, too, in big doses. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah, like I said, he's fine every couple episodes to annoy Frasier and Niles, but her family doesn't work. No, and then eventually, you know, Niles and Daphne want to have a kid, and when they do have a kid, and the mom finds out and she was only supposed to be staying with them for, like, a year, or only a couple months, and then it turned into a year, and as soon as she finds out there's a baby, like, Niles basically has enough and it's like, alright, you're, you're gone, and eventually it's a 
and she gets in a plane in Seattle, but we never see her again. Yeah. Took him long enough. God. Yeah. I just, she really drags down. Because she's like a complete anti-Martin. She's a sitcom stereotype. Yeah. She's, she loves to guilt trip people. Mm -hmm. Completely unlikable character. Oh, yeah. She, she kept uh, Martin away from uh, couple romance interests, too. Yeah. Inadvertently, though. That really wasn't her fault. That was Martin. Hey, Martin. <laughs> well, um... He's too Dr. nice. Dr. Winston's mother. Oh, yeah. I like Cam. I wish he would have been more, uh... Yeah. The only black person on Frasier. Yeah, Cam Winston, basically the black Frasier. 9.15 to 9... 9.30 on BET, everyone. <laughs> but yeah, Cam was a really cool guy. I wish we could have more out of him. Him and Frazier just butting heads because they were so alike. Just this constant rivalry. They, I think they figured it was redundant. And that's why it ends up, he, he only appears a couple times in the last like four seasons. Yeah. Um, well, Frazier's dating all these women and just some of them are like Oh, like this is gonna work out. Otherwise, no. Like, not many, not many of the women last long. No, he he barely has a recurring love interest for more than a couple episodes. Yeah, it's. I I think Martin had the most romance. Martin like, has the longest girlfriend in the season, uh, in the series, and Sherry. Yeah. Who is like in twelve episodes. Yeah, but they end up breaking up because she just wants to have fun while he wants something more. Yeah. And, I mean, Niles was, was with Mel for a bit, and that was its own wrinkles, too. She well, was Mel counts. Finally dumped Mel, mm -hmm. and, you know, him and Daphne are together. Maris has to come back yet again because she gets arrested. Yeah. And that was kind of an arc that was okay, but it was just seemed like, God, Maris is... I think that's in the final season, too. I think so, yeah. yeah it's a they, good way to get rid of the character, because she's a constant specter. Yeah. In her life. Um, and during the show, you know, you just feel bad for, like, Fraser brings up a few times where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm however old. He, uh, he has series is about 50. Yeah. He's like, I'm 50, I'm, I'm living with my father, and, you know, I'm not had any romantic success. It's like, he asks, like, of Niles and Martin a few times, like, do you think I'm ever going to find anybody again? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Martin's like, yeah, you'll, you'll find somebody someday. And eventually it ends up, uh, well, you think originally that's going to be this one girl, um, uh, damn, I forget her name. She's like the cellist and everything. Yeah. The one that's friends with that, uh, loudmouth from their high school. Yeah, those two are a weird plot point. Yeah, I mean, he originally likes the friend, and the loudmouth one is the one that's supposed to be, uh. I think they were definitely setting her up to be his long term. Then they decide to, like, drop the character. Yeah. She, as much as that was the whole sticking point is what they went with her, is like, he, she actually was perfect for him. Mm -hmm. But as he's with her, he suddenly starts thinking, hey, maybe I want to be with the, the louder, more obnoxious one. Yeah. And he, he did sleep with her once, and then he realized it was a mistake. Before. And now he's, like, thinking he wants to be with her again. And that ends up when he ends up breaking up with her, there's an episode where he goes up to a like a cabin, and he's wrestling with like the demons of all the women that were. That is one of the best episodes of the series for every woman he's ever dated. Yeah, they get his mother, they get Diane, they get Lilith, they get some hippie person. His second wife. Uh, he has two. He has two marriages before either Cheers or Fraser start. Uh, one in college to an older woman. And then another one to, uh, the hippie girl, who, uh, that was his, uh, I guess Martin-esque phase. <laughs> uh, and that one didn't last very long either. But, uh, man, I don't know, uh, Laurie Metcalf is, plays his wife, his first wife in one episode. But, uh, they constantly recast her. Which is yeah. weird. They, she's, uh... she's in like two episodes of Frasier. 
and it's just he eventually reaches this thing where he's like he's he's afraid of what is he, he's afraid of commitment because he's afraid of commitment or something or <laughs> or I he, forget he's not afraid of commitment he's afraid that he's gonna let down the person he's with I guess he just comes to terms with the fact that he's not perfect that he should stop looking for somebody who's perfect yeah so that was a really great episode and at the end of the series he runs he he meets this um this this matchmaker uh Charlotte and she's pairing him up with all these uh these not these pretty much these losers yeah. the entire time until he finally realizes that hey maybe Charlotte's actually the one I like and um, <laughs> she has to she has to break up with Harvey Dent in order to make it happen. Yeah. He's the nicest guy in the world. I love that. Yes, Har- that guy. Like, I forget his actor's name. But Aaron Eckhart. I heard okay. Yeah, he's a genuinely nice guy. He's like a yeah. park teacher, and he's a natural like gift, and just he's he's a great guy. But he's dumb as a sack of hammers because he doesn't realize that Fraser's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the funnier running jokes for that. Uh, I think it's three episodes he's in. I think so, yeah. Um, eventually, uh, she breaks up with him, and she's she's with Frazier, but you find out uh, that she's going to move back to Chicago. This is not working out in Seattle, so she's going to leave. I think she gets a job offer to be the head of uh, some company. So the final couple episodes called "Good Night Seattle," which were his his calls at the end of each episode. Yeah. Um, basically, so stuff comes to a head. Like Martin ends up getting remarried. Um, Niles and Daphne have their first kid. Yep. And Fraser's telling a woman uh, all this on an airplane at the beginning, and we think though that's because he's on his he's on a plane to San Francisco. So that's where he said he could get a new job at. But at the end of the episode, you find out the plane lands in Chicago, which yeah. means he's going after the girl. And the last line of the show is, you know, wish me luck. So, I mean, so much happens at, in the end of the series. I mean, all these characters have connected with each other so much. Like, it's a very emotional finale. Like, it's a typical Frasier misunderstanding setup. When they think he's dying for yeah, two minutes, and then he's like, "What? Well, no, I'm moving to San Francisco." Yeah, when I pass through that Golden Gate, I'm going to be smiling. But <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> Niles, Niles is like, "You've already made me cry once tonight. That's that's enough of that." Yeah. Um, and and Martin finally tells Frasier, "Thank you." Yeah. And, when he's getting his chair to be moved into the new place. But we find out all along that Martin would have been comfortable in one of the other ones. Yeah. He's just a stubborn jerk. <laughs> and yeah, it's just all these like during the series, like I'd say almost every episode has a little bit of like, you know, each one has its own little bit of character development. Yeah. And filler I don't know, I don't There's think it's filler, it's... but it's always funny because it's because the characters act in a way that only they would respond to situations like that. And yeah. it's like the caviar episode isn't important at all. But, but it's it's so... hilarious. Yes, yes it is. We don't care about your stupid caviar. We're here for the billion dollars in forged DVDs. <laughs> they treat it like cocaine, Roz gets addicted. It's a hilarious episode, but it doesn't forward anything. One of my favorites that develops a bit more with um, Martin is the uh, the chest pains episode. Yeah. Where, you know, each, you know, like the principle is like, it's always saddening when a son beats his father in something, and Fraser just keeps getting his ass kicked by Martin in chess. Yeah. And he just wants to win so bad. He, like, that, that final game of theirs, they're, like, trash-talking each other and everything. That monologue Martin has about how he's a detective, and... Yeah. Of course he'd be good at chess because he has to think ahead to catch criminals and things like that. And yeah. you realize that Fraser looked down on his father. Yeah. Unintentionally, but... 
it's like, yeah, his Fraser's quote unquote intellect, you know, just couldn't go toe to toe with Martin's, you know, yeah, natural ability there for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of some ones that didn't really that did seem indeed like filler, like maybe the spelling bee one, but that's more like familial honor. Yeah, and I think the Freddy episodes do their own little thing. Yeah. You get to see Fraser be a parent, and he's always considered a pretty good parent. Yeah. I mean, there's that little disconnect at the beginning when he wants to just get him all those dirty toys for Christmas, but, you know, Martin saves the day and gets him the most wanted toy. Yeah. You know, it's just a son, like a father watching out for his son, who, you know, he's watching out for his grandson at the same time. What was a little disturbing during the show was, like, how at the end, you know, Martin hooks up with the old babysitter. Yeah, the implications there weren't great. No, I mean, Ronnie... Age-wise, you know, she, the actress, I'm sorry, I can't remember her Wendy name. Wendy Malick, uh, she's about, I'd say, because honestly, um, John Mahoney is actually only 10 years older than Kelsey Grammer, so he, he was in his uh, 60s at this point, but in the show, Martin was like 70 something. But uh, Wendy Malick is probably, was probably about 55 or so. I mean, it's, it's kind of believable that those two would, like, they uh, act together. I don't think she needs to be the babysitter. If they took that out, and she was just Family. an old crush, an older girl Frazier had a crush on, that met Martin, and they decided to hit, and they hit it off. That would have been fine. Yeah. Her being the babysitter is just a bit kind of cringy. Because, yeah, I mean, we know Martin would never do anything like that. No. no. But the implication in universe is that they had a thing for him to get a younger woman because he's Frazier's dad and all the crane men <laughs> get younger women. What you, I thought you brought her here for me. Since when do I bring you women? <laughs> what are you, the Sultan of Brunei? But, yeah, as the series has it reached its end, you just felt like there was just so much bonding between all of them, and not many episodes seemed like, you know, that forced. Yeah. Lots. I mean, there are some that are silly, but there, even there was one that pointed out, like, actually poked fun of itself. Like, that one where um, uh, Martin has to pretend he's gay. Yeah. Like, it, what's funny is, it's like, that all gets set up while they're going to an opera, and Martin's, like, bashing an opera, saying, okay, it's time for us to go watch some stuff that'll never happen in real life. But what they're doing right now could only be an opera itself. I love when the show makes fun of itself. Like, uh, the dinner party episode, uh, when Daphne decides she's going to do dinner parties from now on. And it yes. begins with the typical Frasier disaster, and Martin's an archduke for some reason. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end, everything has gone wrong that could possibly go wrong. And Frasier's like, congratulations, Daphne. Now you're a crane. And she just breaks down. Yeah. It's amazing. When the show can put fun at itself, this has turned into a Frasier retrospective rather than yeah. us talking. But I think you have to understand the character or the finale isn't as strong. It's and, hmm? um, Martin is such a down-to-earth character, too. I love when he breaks the fourth wall a bit, too. Yeah. I think he was making fun of you know shows that use laugh tracks when he, uh, which there should well, they had a live audience, but it's still just as bad. Yeah. Well, do you remember when Martin said, you know, he watched Eddie for hours playing with bubble wrap? Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop, pop. pop. It's like, then, the, you know, the audience laughs, and Martin's like, you know, it's it's something to be a dog, to be easily amused by something like that. Yeah. And he waits like five seconds, and he goes, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> I think he was just making fun of the fact, you know, that, you know, people can just be amused by mm -hmm. something. Yeah, it was a very self-aware show. Like it, like I said, like the weakest season to me is ten, and even that is some of the best TV. Like, is that the one with Patrick Stewart, or is that eleven? Patrick Stewart is in that one. I think he's in ten, nine or ten. That, that episode that... is fantastic, where he made Frazier becomes his boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the. Liberty cameos, whether they were in real life or as the callers, was just so strong with the show, too. Yeah. 
Michael Keaton, he's Lilith's uh, brother, mm-hmm. who completely scams Fraser. In a, in a beautiful episode. Even though you feel a little cringy at the end when Fraser's trying to unmask him, it's like, no. No, Fraser's right. Because, of course, he's a good judge of people for the most part. He wouldn't. But just seeing that wheelchair in the hallway at the end. And he gets the, uh, the, the salt thingy at the end again. Yeah. It, you know, if I could, my, some of my favorite episodes, like, that I haven't mentioned, though. I think the ski lodge is fantastic. I think that's everybody's. It's the big old misunderstanding episode that... Oh, a great example of a, uh, a simple premise that is a whole episode is the one where they're trying to plan a dinner party. Yeah. It's just like, everything just goes wrong. They can't get the guests they want. The guests of honor can't even be there. They have this child that needs watch that doesn't eat typical food and all the while Roz and Daphne are trying to get these dresses to go to a party and they keep getting stopped and Martin had to move his poker game a few times and, and you have nice father-son episode too like when Fraser wants to be on the softball team Martin takes him batting yeah oh yeah and then he tells Frederick that uh Martin can't do uh, addition or something in his head. Can't do math in his head. Yeah. You can't do math. <laughs> He's like, I can do five times eight. Thirty-five. Uh, <laughs> Grandpa. I love that. And Frederick had come to terms with the fact that his father is an athletic or anything, but his grandfather. Um, that whole there was an episode. Um, that what if episode where. Uh, Fraser is tired of being a nice guy for everybody and ends up picking up that prostitute. Yeah, I love that episode because it really shows you that Fraser, at the end of the day, can't violate his own moral code. And he, even if all that bad stuff had happened, he never would have regretted helping that person. Who, who, who it turns out is just a nice lady, not a, a transgendered prostitute. Uh, building, <laughs> which almost at the beginning. Yeah. Um. I think the only one time just during the show where I generally didn't like Fraser's character was when he refused to lie, like when he was going to be at the uh, court thing for Maris's like lawsuit against Niles. Yeah. Like the whole not acknowledging that Niles and Daphne had a relationship thing. I think that's Which is what... ridiculous because they didn't. Yeah. And I get that he he means he can't say that Niles didn't have feelings for Daphne. But that's not what a lawyer would ask. Right. He'd ask something like, had you ever like exchange anything in public, you know? Yeah. You get signs of affection in that. And just the fact that Fraser just won't, you know, fall on that sword for his brother. Just for that instance. Yeah. And Martin has to give that speech about how he did, he lied about giving his rights under oath. Yeah, I mean, Martin, he, he was easily, like, even though you know, obviously that's ethically the wrong thing to do. Yes. Like, he, knew the, well, he knew that's the right thing to do. Yeah. That's, I mean, the guy took a swing at him, so technically there, that was extenuating circumstances. Yeah. Though that whole thing was fake anyway, so. Yeah. Um, another instance, too, was when Frazier was, um, sli- like, hitting on, well, he was dating that one caller's, like, girlfriend. Yeah. And, like, when he was making out with her, like, that's when his stomach would get all queasy and that. It's in like, that I, situation, though, he, yeah, sometimes his morals get the better of him. Yeah. And he had to re-examine his moral code, because it doesn't really actually yeah. work for him most of the time. Yeah. Um, probably one of the more, also, like, a betrayal of character, too, uh, when he dressed up like the clown. To scare Martin. Well, I think that's fine. I think because Martin had been doing him the whole episode, and he's like, you know what? Just this once, I'm gonna pull a switcheroo on Dad. Well, I mean, he has and been... his kind of. He felt so bad about it after. Yeah, but he's he's found a way to you know scare and surprise his friends before, like when he arranged the whole you know zombie thing in the studio. Oh that... yeah, but that's very Frasier. I think he was at the point where he's like, you know what? I'm going to do this like Dad would do it. 
and we'll, buy, we'll have a whole big laugh about it. And <laughs> he just, he didn't know Martin was definitely afraid of the clowns. And why would he? Because Martin would never say that to his kids. It's brilliant. I think a good example of how far that those two came to was, uh, remember how it suffered when they were they, when they went to that steakhouse? Yeah, that episode, that, they are their worst in that episode. Yeah, completely snobby-ish, and even the dad has to bring it home saying, you know, your mom, you know, would have, she was fine to have a dog at a ball game and stuff like that. And, you know, she would, she would have ate everything and stuff like that. That's just, yeah, those two are really, like, that was elitist to the max for them. Yeah, that's the worst they ever get, though, I think. Because they make concessions in later seasons, they'll go to baseball games and stuff in Martin. Yeah, uh, the basketball game where Miles My- makes that half court shot. Yeah, but. and we way we got way off tangent on this, but it's just a really great show. <laughs> we might have to do. I guess this is our Frasier episode now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I mean, it was a great show through and through. Yeah, it's not many episodes where I'll see it's on and I'll just click click it off. Yeah. Like, most of Daphne's moms, though, I will click that. <laughs> I hate... Unless, like, there's really good Martin or Frasier stuff in that episode, now nah, I'll just skip anything with her. Yeah. She's a horrible character. She... She so was. And Sherry almost got there, but at least she was likable, though. Sherry was fine because Martin liked her, and she wasn't, like... She was never really the focal point of an episode. But, like, Gertrude would be in so many episodes, and no one liked her. No. She I, well, never really redeems herself as a person. No, I, I can't think of anything nice she ever did for anybody. She like, doesn't. Like, genuinely, like, not, like, being ulterior. I wouldn't say ulterior motive, but not res, not reactionary, like, where she actually took the initiative to be there. Yeah. Like, she's really manipulative of Daphne. And... Just, I I would love to have seen more of Daphne's dad. Yeah, Mr. Moon seems like a decent guy, if a little, a little gruff. He's gruff, and plus he gets paid for people to beat him up to impress their tastes. Yeah, that's just perfect for Daphne's father. <laughs> yeah, and you know I can understand maybe why Gertrude's so bad is because Daphne painted this picture of her over the course of seasons. Yeah, as being like, you know, she really. Oh, well, yeah, Daphne's family life. It's played for last, but it's horrifying if you think about it. Yeah, the dad's constantly at the bar, and the mom's just psychotic. Yeah, there's there'll be no uh, there'll be no rats in hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, I am a psychiatrist. <laughs> and that was also one of the big overarching things of the show too. Is you know, Fraser. That was even an episode. It's like yeah, he wants to turn it off being a psychiatrist outside of work, but he has to be at home, too. Yeah. Uh, I think we all feel like that sometimes, though. I think that he articulated it really well. Yeah. That speech, like, again, the monologues in this show are so fantastic. He's like, I give and give and give. And when I get home, all I want to do is spend time with my friends and family, have a little cake. And, no, I end up having to give more of myself here, too. And it, there's not enough of me left at the end of the day for me to be happy. And I think it just works. That episode is, ends on a really uh, positive note because he does finally get some time to himself. And he even pets Eddie. Yeah. This, those moments when he, he lets his armor down, like, yeah. are good. Like, yeah, he can say that he doesn't like Eddie, but, you know, he does. And they're just, they're just like a big family. Yeah. And, I mean, you can start off rough around the edges, but, you know, all those interactions, they, they just, they formed impressions on you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, going back to the, the point, I think you have to watch all these episodes, and none of them are bad. Well, none of them are terrible. And he develops as a character, which is rare for a sitcom. Even Cheers really did. But he develops, and he's not the same person as when he started. Oh, definitely not. No. Season one, Frasier would have went to San Francisco. Definitely. 
he wanted to bail on the entire thing, like, a couple episodes in. Yeah. Like, okay, he wasn't instantly getting a payoff. Yeah. For the, for the relationship, so yeah, he would have left. But, yeah, it's, now. yeah, it's scary to think, though, the original idea from the show, like, was maybe Fraser being a PhD guy in an apartment. <laughs> One of the original pitches was, uh, Instead of being Fraser, it would be Kelsey Grammer as an original character who was a paraplegic. Ah, right. Which I don't know how they were going to make that work. That's <laughs> comedy, but. <laughs> but again, it's a great series. It's available on oh, Netflix, up. Hulu, Amazon. Hallmark at, new, at midnight through. Oh, no, it's on at Hallmark from like 1 to like 4 a.m. Yeah, Lifetime. The only time television's for idiots uh, doesn't apply. Lifetime around uh, 10 in the morning. <laughs> Lifetime, one thing, though, they don't stupidly censor it like Hallmark does. Yeah. Because you're not allowed to say crap and damn on Hallmark. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll give the points for that. Darn you! <laughs> you know, it's it's bad when they, they censor it sometimes on Hallmark because that one caller, when Fraser wanted to get callbacks from people he's helped, that one guy is like, yeah, people think I'm arrogant. You know what I say? Blank them. You know? It's like, wait a minute, that's worse. Because you, <laughs> he's actually saying screw. Yeah. Like, no, your you're, you're censoring is making it worse. I kind of want to do lifetime edits of Frasier. Oh, my God. Um, so you got, yeah, you got that. It's on it's on DVD, too, complete series. It should be cheap enough now, too. I got all mine at a flea market. I wouldn't recommend the DVDs only because there's, like, two commentaries across the limit seasons. Yeah, the special features are pretty lacking. But, like, I mean... I'd rather just, like I said, it's on it's on Netflix and Hulu for free. You might as well just go there. Yeah. It's probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Oh. So. It never quite reached the popularity like Friends of Seinfeld. No. It's, it's finale in 2004 was just blended in amongst, you know, hey, did you see Friends ended? Oh, did you see Fraser ended? <laughs> yeah. It was just lost in that. Which is a pity because the Friends finale, like we, we said before we started, is terrible. That's right, America. Come get us. No, I, I don't think anyone who watched that show would be happy with how that ended. Oh, Rock and Rachel are back together. Oh, you didn't see it either? Just we dropped. teased Joey for two years, but uh, guess what? It was Ross and Rachel, because we didn't know how to write an ending. Yeah. Instead of spending his last two seasons building up a Ross and Rachel relationship again, which, you know, would have made sense. Well, I think that's going to do it for Fraser, Jason. We might have to go the express route on show number three. <laughs> You're right. Um, actually, I think we're just going to skip show number three. As much as I want to talk about it, we're already in a, an hour ten. We'll just have to make number three a retrospective. Right. Yeah. Actually, yeah, just so everyone knows, we were going to do Psych. And there's a lot to talk about on Psych's final season and how flawed it was. Yeah. Well, to be fair, they, I don't. I wonder how much they knew that was their last season. I think... I have a whole thing about how USA really railroaded Psych in the last, like, three seasons. Oh, easily. And, uh, that really affected the last season, because they they leave on a cliffhanger in seven, where they clearly thought they were going to have a full 22 episodes again. But hey, if you like boring hour-long dramas about rich people and doctors, um, USA is the place to go now. I am, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to put it right on the table. I hate Chris Lee knows best. I hate it. It doesn't even make sense. Like, that show has been on for almost as long, I think, as Sykes has been on. And why is that show still on? Because it's a reality show and it's cheap. Oh. Psych is a multi-camera hour-long drama. And I'd love to know, like, after that final episode, like when you know Chrisley came on right after I'd love to have known how many people tuned off I'm sure anyone who was watching Psych does not care about that show <sighs> but maybe we'll eventually get that monk crossover TV movie at best yeah. 
<laughs> Probably not, though. Wonder. So, uh, yeah, that'll wrap it up for this episode. Thank you for listening to our feature podcast. Sherry. Sherry, Jason? Yes. Yes, Marcus, I think that will do it. I have a vintage 92. I need some sherry, but we're fresh out. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take okay, a turn this episode. <laughs> hang on, you know the one joke we gotta do, though. Come on. When you, when you sit around the amazingly upholstered yes, Tuscan yes. you sit around the amazingly upholstered Tuscan pillow. Wow, this is the smartest show on TV. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to hear more about Frasier, you can follow us on facebook.com slash Rebel House Podcast, or uh, Mark at, at Analyst Duelist on Twitter, or myself at King Riptor on Twitter. Um, you also really? please like and subscribe. We live at the Elm Bay Towers. I've just found out that's not real. That's that his entire apartment's uh, perspective is from like a hill or something where there's no buildings. Hmm. So, like that skyline view of Seattle, you can't get it unless you're like in a helicopter. We like Fraser so much we stopped our own sign off. Yes. <laughs> Good night, Seattle. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>